Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience Week 6 Waiver Wire Power Rankings Injury and Week 5 Recap. And to do this all with me, as he does every single Monday. Listen, it's a Monday morning. You need your fill of hot takes. Insane takes. And who better to do that than Tim and Gust? Tim and Gust. That is not my name. You got takes, though. I do. Here we are working on a holiday. People don't realize how hard, how much effort we put into this. It sounds like you need to put more effort into talking directly into the microphone. Okay. Instead of just moving around whatever you're talking into. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, well, maybe you should fly me out in person then. Oh, maybe. Listen, the people are clamoring for Tim Andacust in studio. Unfortunately, I'm in a temporary space right now. Soon enough, I'll be in the real location. Yeah, maybe you can come up, stay with me for a week, and we'll do a... You can you can be like Andy Richter. You can just sit in on my shows. So I would also rule the universe? I mean, that's a... I would say at this point, that's a pretty dated reference. I would say that was a dated reference two years after the show was off the air. Well, it lasted a year, although it did have one of my all-time favorite jokes, which I constantly repurposed for Jay Cutler, although I haven't done this year. It was the, one guy's wife told her husband that she, he, clean, he cleans the coffee table slower than he processes sugar because he had diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like Jay Cutler. Listen, he picks up the, he picks up the blitz slower than he processes sugar, although he's just terrible at this point, so it doesn't matter. Poor Dolphins, man. Your, your Dolphins over is hurting. They won yesterday. What are you talking about? You, you think they look good, do they? They look good, but they won, and you know, in the end, that's all that really matters. It's true. I mean, when you can when you can beat another team who's playing a backup quarterback, then you're looking fine. Maybe they can get the Raiders next week, although they don't. Listen, they're 1-0 at Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, you say you think the coolest stadium in football is really propelling them to victories? It, yes. Okay, then. All right, here's what I need everyone to do. Please give the episode a like. It will help spread the show around. And if you can spread the show around, go for it. Listen, we're going to have crazy Tim stuff at the end, so that's the stuff that people want to see anyway. The analysis, eh, you know, marginal at best. Uh, Also, subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience on iTunes, on Stitcher, Google Play, and Audio Boom. It doesn't matter which device that you have, you can get the Pat Mayo Experience for free, uncut, always leave a review if you want to. Help me out a little bit. All right, let's get into this. I want to start with running back waiver wire pickup rankings for the week. Uh, Then we'll get into a bit of a recap. Then we'll come back to the other positions. Unlike most weeks, uh, there wasn't a lot of turnover at running back, to be perfectly honest. There wasn't that one big injury that really stands out. So at the top, I put Aaron Jones as number one, but I think that people are getting it a bit twisted. He's the best waiver pickup because his performance yesterday, I think, buys Ty Montgomery a little bit of time on the sidelines where he was practicing in a limited capacity this week. He has broken ribs. Like, Ty Montgomery is good. Let's leave him on the sidelines for two more weeks, allow his ribs to heal if Aaron Jones can be a pretty good placeholder. But I feel like when Ty Montgomery does return to the Packers lineup, that Aaron Jones is going back to the bench and playing a complimentary role. I don't think that he's won this job. He's just won this job over Jamal Williams while Ty Montgomery's out. Does anybody think he has the job over Ty Montgomery? Yeah, this is what I'm reading on the internet this morning. I was blown away. Well, those people are delusional. Aaron uh, Jones looked good. Aaron Jones did look good, and he will be. Maybe he'll get thirty percent of the carries of the time uh, whenever Montgomery comes back. Now they've got a very tough matchup at Minnesota next week, so I would not be surprised actually if they try to get Montgomery out there to play. It's a really important game, but nevertheless, uh, it's Montgomery's job. I still think until he gets it back, uh, until, as soon as he comes back, for sure. But I, I just do, I do think this by I don't think they'll rush Montgomery back now that they have a capable replacement. Like I'll, 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 back, I'll but... allow your guy to actually get healthy and don't put him in a position where he can just re-break his ribs or if he's out there running with a flak jacket. Like is he's not going to be at 100. percent The big problem I would have with this, I think that Jones would morph into a complimentary role. It's just the Packers don't use a complimentary role at all. Like Montgomery was playing 95 percent of the snaps. Montgomery's out. Aaron Jones comes in. He plays 95 percent of the snaps. It just seems like that's what they want to do with their running back spot you may be right uh i in fact I, I really can't disagree with that however i could make the case for you the opposite way about montgomery and jones this week that if you're really comfortable with jones then you're not worried about bringing back montgomery a little bit early because if he gets dinged up again you still have jones there in the wing so i mean i think that could go either way well i, I don't I, I would think that if you have someone who is a capable placeholder not as good as your starter that you would want to get your starter back up to full health like what what are they winning the super bowl in week seven no no, they're not, but this is a really important game. So I'm just, we'll see. You, you may be right. Maybe they'll give uh, 
Montgomery the extra week. Jones ought to be the number one pickup. Uh, so in, in some senses, we're just in violent agreement here. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily know if he is the number one pickup. The problem is there's not a lot of really good pickups this week. No, this is the week where you ought not to be burning your number one waiver wire priority yeah, on a run. There, there's a lot of holdover. So Aaron Jones, you might get another week as a starter out of him, but then you're dealing with Montgomery returning. So does that really make him the number one waiver pickup? Yes, for this week it does. But then I look at someone like Wayne Gallman, who I could see becoming the starter in New York. He has an easier path to starting more games this season in New York than Aaron Jones does in Green Bay, at least in my opinion. I just don't know if he's any good, and the Giants reek. I agree with all of that. Both Jones and Gallman have incredibly tough matchups this coming week, so I wouldn't be, like, desperately trying to get them to, to plug him in for next week. But I would have Gallman behind Jones just because it looks like Jones did play better. Though I like Gallman a lot. Uh, the Giants are bereft of talent, and Goldman, uh, Goldman may just get a lot of carries. Well, and the, the thing with Goldman, too, like, he ended up with four catches yesterday, which was really nice. Paul Perkins didn't play with a rib injury, then Orleans Darqua Doc. Yeah, John Gruden said he's a fan favorite of the Meadowlands. Yeah, you, 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 you brought that up last week. Yeah, well, it still annoys me, because it's obviously a lie. Well, when there's trouble, you call DW, but he had to leave the game, too. So he has a calf <laughs> injury, he was out. Then, like, Shane Vereen was in the game, but he never runs the ball. So if Goldman's like... Those guys will probably be back. So it's going to be some weird three-headed monster. If Ben McAdoo wasn't, like, legit incompetent, it seems like they would just give Gallman. When Gallman touched the ball yesterday, he looked really good. He was the only one. Like, Darqua had the touchdown run, but every other time that he touched the ball, he was useless. Gallman actually looked good, you know, running between the tackles, running off tackle. Like, it seemed like he was making something out of nothing every single time, and then they were like, no, 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 we need Shane Vereen in the game now. I like Goldman. I you said I wouldn't have him ahead of Jones, but I like him a lot. I think he's a really important back. All right, so I think okay. the next person we're going to have pro, we're, we're going to have disagreements. Okay, so the big thing right now, the reason, okay, number three in the week six waiver wire power rankings, Marlon Mack. Uh, he came in at the end of the game, basically act as a closer for the Colts uh, against the 49ers. He was the one playing in the fourth quarter. He's the one who played in overtime. And he looked really good. I mean, every time that he cut back to the right side, the 49ers didn't have a clue what was going on, and he just took off for like 30 yards a pop, and he almost scored a second touchdown. He was down at the two-yard line, so he had a very impressive game. Now, when it comes to snap count, uh, he was way behind Gore, and he was way behind Turbin. He didn't do much in the passing game. Gore was acting as their primary receiving back. Turbin had two targets, and Mack only had one. The thing that I like about Mack here is he's coming back from shoulder injury as well, so this is the first time he's been healthy in a while is that they went to him late in the game. I don't think that he passes Frank Gore, because, let's be real here, Chuck Pagano, he's going to stick with Frank Gore, because Chuck Pagano, also a terrible coach. Is just... well, Frank, but Frank Gore's actually playing pretty decently, too. Frank, 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 Frank Gore's all right, but it doesn't... Not it doesn't... to give Frank Gore a bit of credit, but he's actually playing pretty well. Yeah, he's, he's doing fine. He's getting 17 carries a game for, like, 3.8 yards per carry. He's fine. Why not try to... If you're not going to be good, and you're not going to win the division, which, I mean, they're in it right now at 2-3, and three, but they're probably the worst team in this division until at least luck comes back, which looks like it's another month right now. Why not see if Mac's good? Why not see if he can be the full-time guy? I don't think that he's going to be the full-time guy. My recommendation of my article up on DKPlaybook.com right now, which you can go check out, and it will be updated after Monday night, or if we get more injury news or if something happens, the rankings will get updated. Don't worry about that, people. I'm here for you. But I think he's an ad. I just don't think that he's a start. I think he's someone you want to have on your team to see what happens. Because almost like Gallman, it's not quite as clear, but you can see the path to him getting 20 touches a game. I just don't think it happens for another few weeks. Okay, but like, so Kamara is a start right away. And mcguire has got a reasonable chance to be a start right away. And uh, Pro I mean, Seattle's on bias. So that's a different story. Uh, Smallwood, if he comes back, he's a start right away. Well, Geo's a start. Geo is, well, not a, Geo is not a start, by the way. Geo what, 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 what is it with you and Geo? You wanna... He continues to be meaningful. every Week after week, he does continue to be meaningful. What did he do? In a way that... Did he do anything this week? Uh, no. Effort. The answer is no. He had two carries for two yards and two catches for 30 yards. Yeah, great start. He sounds like someone who started on your team. Whatever. I like Geo better. I'm not convinced with Mac. Let, but let's let's throw the Geo point out there. Okay, fine. Kamara is an immediate start this week, and I think McGuire is too, assuming that Forte isn't back. And why would he be? He's a thousand years old and he has a toe injury. Well, I, so I, just I I, on, I, I, I explain this more in the waiver wire piece. I mean, McGuire has the potential to move up, 
Uh, I don't have time to read things. If Forte, because Powell left the game too with a calf injury, he didn't come back in. If both those guys sit, McGuire would be the for sure number one pickup going against the Patriots defense. The problem is we're not going to know the status of either one of those guys by the time you actually have to make your waiver bid. So, I mean, you can go all in on McGuire and all of a sudden Powell's back or Forte's back and he's just on the bench and you just wasted all your money. So you have to factor that into the rankings. At least in my mind, that's what I've done. I think if uh, Powell is back next week, irrespective, I, I do believe that McGuire is going to get a lot of work. He'll get some work. If Powell is back, Powell will get the majority of the work. I don't think so. I why, think it'll why be, not? I, because I think they saw last week from McGuire that the guy can be trusted to handle the load and that Powell just got dinked. Powell's a really important player for this Jets team, and they can't afford to give him too much work and overwork him in intro. So I think just for just for ratiocinative purposes, I expect to see uh, McGuire get a decent share of the load. Elijah McGuire, 11 carries for 20 yards last week. Great day, though. That, thanks. That's fine. Is it fine? It doesn't sound fine. I'm not worried about him. I mean, we have a tough matchup. We have no chance to win next week. But it does set up for future games when we have a chance. I, I like that you said you have no chance of winning this week. Although, like, 30 seconds before we started, you said you might make the Jets your super lock and potential upset to win. No, I didn't say that last part. Oh, I yeah, did you say- did. Oh, yes, you did. You just don't even remember. You get so you get caught in Jets frenzy and don't remember anything you say. I will say that the uh, the Reddit board of the Jets has been far more pleasant recently. <laughs> it's not the dark place it once was over the summer? No, it's it's still pretty caustic, but not as caustic as it used to be. All right, let's swirl back to Mac for a second. The thing that I, I mean, Kamara's at four, Ellington's at five, then Maguire's at six. Uh, Ellington, if you play in a PPR league, just pick up the guy and start him every single week until the, his nine-catch floor kind of peters out. Yeah, because well, sure. They're, I, I, the, I. they're bad. They're going to be throwing, and if they're going to be throwing, he's going to be on the field like 60% of the time. And if Carson Palmer's under any kind of duress, he just dumps it off to Ellington. He has, he has 20 targets, or more than 20 targets over the past two games, and he has nine catches in each of them. Like, hey, here's your 14-point floor. What else do you want? Imagine if he actually scored a touchdown or broke a long one. It would be like a 30-point day for Andre Ellington. I know. It's crazy. Somehow Carson Palmer's going to win the passing title this year, and he's going to win, like, five games. Be the worst quarterback in football. Yeah, but he keeps throwing for, like, almost three. He almost threw for 300 again yesterday. I he, mean, like, he he's was... going to end up throwing for, like, 4,800 yards. Well, it's funny because uh, the week one, he wasn't very good. And then the other few weeks, like, he's had bad stretches, and then he's looked really good, like, throwing the ball downfield. And, you know, he's legitimately got himself to the 300 yards. He was bad yesterday, like, really bad. He was really bad. I, he's second right now in passing yards for the season, but he's got a huge lead over the guy in third. So Who's in first? Smith? Uh, Brady is. Brady is? Where's Watson? Watson must be eking up the list already. Yeah, well, he missed a game completely, and then he played terribly against the Bengals. So. Oh, that's right. Watson is... Ooh, who the heck is Watson? 19th. Okay. It, with, but, uh, with J.J. Watt out for the year, it seems like he might get a few more passing yards now. He may. Just get a few. He, the kid looks good. He does look really good. And if their defense is not going to be good, he might have to throw a lot. He's going to have to throw a ton. And Will Fuller's from re-emerging is one of the most important threats uh, on their offense. That uh, you oh, know he's going to. Of course, when you're when you're down twenty, just bomb it to Will Fuller every time. Why not? Yeah, listen, I, I'm with you. I, it's a pretty sound strategy. But I don't know how effective Will Fuller is going to be in super close games because I don't know if he has the 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 confidence unless he has stick him on his hands all of a sudden. Uh, in a you know a tight spot. Hey, we need a win here. We we need to make this third down. Hey, let's throw it to Will Fuller. Oh no, he dropped it. Like, I, I I can see that happening at some point too. He, he has always had a case of the drops. That is a very fair point. Okay, back to Mac. The reason that I have Mac at number three is that I think that he could win this job and have it outright. The reason that I have him over Kamara, it's not for a start this week. If you need one to start this week, the answer is Elvin Kamara. The these power rankings are for who you should pick up for the season. If you're fine at running back um, and you have two starters, you probably don't need Kamara. He's not going to be the lead guy in New Orleans. As much as you and I both hate Mark Ingram, the reason we kind of hate Mark Ingram is because he's always just there. And it's not like he's going anywhere anytime soon. So there's no chance of Kamara breaching into that, like, 20-touch full-time running back status. And if he has a down game in the receiving game, he's a potential, like, two-point player. Now, Mac is kind of the same way, but you're shooting for the upside that he can take over this job. Kamara's not taking over the job. He's split at best. Mac, in his best-case scenario, could end up being the full-time guy. That would be my difference between them. I would rather risk it with Mac put him on my bench, knowing I don't have to play him, and seeing what happens. If I needed a running back for this week, yeah, Kamara, Ellington, those are the guys I'd be picking up. 
fine, you've made your case. I think unless Gore gets hurt, there's no way Mac takes his job. But we'll just disagree. And Frank Gore does never get hurt, so maybe you're on to something. We'll see. All right, so the rest of them, uh, Wendell Smallwood at 7, Protsite's going out by with his ankle injury. He should be back. That backfield is just a mess right now. Jarek McKinnon, uh, we'll see what he does Monday night. Uh, I don't have the highest hopes with them as favorites in this game. I would expect to see a lot of Latavius Murray. Uh, if they get down in the contest, then, yeah, there's going to be a lot of Jarek on the field, but that's going to be a week-to-week thing with him. I doubt he takes over as the full-time guy. If there's a path to volume on the Vikings right now, it runs through Latavius Murray. Whether he's yeah, good... This is not, this what, is not Jarek's first crack at being the Vikings lead back in his career. True. And at every, at every opportunity, he's, he's blown it. So why would this be any different? And, look, listen, Latavius Murray's not great, but... He has shown that he can be a workhorse type back, even if he runs for three yards a carry. And it seems like the Vikings are fine with that. They're just hey, hey, just go out here, run the clock for us, don't get hurt, and we'll figure out the rest. Now that Bradford looks like he's going to be back, they, they should be much better on offense. I hope so. Because you picked them to win the Super Bowl? Or? No, I didn't pick them to win this. I picked them to make the NFC title game. Oh, so they could lose to Dallas. Yes, well, that's not looking great uh, either. I don't know if Dallas is going to make the NFC title game. I don't know. The NFC... And the AFC are so bad right now that there's a lot, other than Kansas City and like Carolina and Philadelphia, it's it's a pretty open uh, stretch for everybody. So the second part of the running back rankings, a lot of the same names. The one big thing to point out is I'm going to just screw up this guy's last name. I think it's Breda. Matt Breda? Breda? I was watching that game without sound, so I wasn't able to hear his name. It's, it's one of those backups, so until you hear it, you don't know it. And I just wasn't watching. But anyway, he outsnapped Carlos Hyde yesterday because Kyle Shanahan said he was playing the hot hand, although it was very clear that Carlos Hyde looked banged up with a hip injury, but they're saying that it was nothing. Uh, that's concerning for me if I own Carlos Hyde. Yeah, that's not, not great at all. I mean, I don't even know what that even means to say you're going to ride the hot hand. This is not basketball. It's, it's it's football. I like that. The, the analogy doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it just he looked like he was running better potentially because Carlos Hyde was injured. Maybe that was the reason. Sure, whatever those metaphysics mean, I guess. All right, and there's really no one else down there. Just a bunch of handcuffs. Oh no, no, Kendrick West had two touchdowns. Why don't I have him first? Yeah, yeah. Why isn't he number one? You you, you should pick up Chuck Kendrick West and play him every week. See how that works out. He for will. You. He will. He only should God forbid anything happen to Kareem Hunt. I think West would be pretty meaningful. I, and you know, I, let's I, say, I agree, but he's on this. Ha- he's on this handcuff lift. Foreman, and, Connor, but, Breda, Morris, West, Tolbert. Like no, no, but if Kelsey's also hurt, I think West is also somewhat I mean. They, they don't have any other players. Yeah, and Chris Conley ruptured his. They lost yeah. Conley. Uh, if Kelsey's out next week, like West will have to play and have to be meaningful. And so he in a deep league, I would fly could see you flexing him next week if there's no Kelsey. Eh, oh. That that's risky biz. No, uh, well, I mean, who who else are getting the Chiefs score forty points no matter who's playing. So like. Who's going to get those points? I, I, you could be right, but it's not like, hey, Kelsey's out. I'll flex West. Like you, you might need a tight oh, end to be, fill in. I would be delighted to do it, but I also wouldn't be like uh, worried about. It. I would be worried about it, that he gets zero points. Yeah. You you wouldn't worry about that whatsoever. No, not really. I think he's going to get. If Kelsey's out, I think he'll be used. I think uh, Andy Reid will design plays for him. So I don't think that Kelsey will miss time. That's that's my hot take on it. I, think, I hope not. I think the reason that he didn't come back in because they were up by so much, they were like, eh, take your dizzies to the locker room, pal. And then it will come out that he'll have to tell the truth. And then who knows what will happen at that point. Anyway, tell me about the Jets. Your Jets won again. You super locked them in. You got it right. Although you reverse cursed them by saying that they couldn't beat Kevin Hogan, which is a hilarious kind of sentiment. But hey, He went the- right down the field and drove it right to the end zone, I'll have you know. What happened to your boy, Deshaun Kaiser? He's got no help, but he's also making bad rookie. He's actually playing like a rookie quarterback. You know, we're conditioned to think that, you know, quarterbacks should come in sort of like the way Watson did and just play great right away. But in fact, the case is even the best, even the best quarterbacks rarely are stars as rookies. Now, Peyton Manning was terrible as a rookie, for example. And Kaiser is just turning the ball over a lot. And he looks like a, a rookie and he's got absolutely no help, uh, in the receiving core tight joke who actually looks half decent, but the Browns don't target or use him enough. And everyone else on the Browns is pretty bad. Uh, so I, I haven't given up and there's no reason to give up on Kaiser. We've seen Hogan play. Hogan's not the answer to anyone's problems. I just think that Kaiser needs offensive help, but he's a rookie and he'll learn. And the jets, you know, the jets played good football against him and they, they brought pressure. The jets are a decent in, in an AFC where everyone who isn't Kansas city is bad and maybe Denver, uh, the Jets are, you know, as good as just about any other team. 
But you just said that they have no chance of beating the Patriots. So you no, I don't think the Pats coming off the super long bye and with just the amount of points that the Jets are not going to win games when the other team can put up thirty plus. The Jets have to strangle you and, and try to beat you. You know, like they did last, last week, 20 to sixteen, those types of games. And I, I don't as bad as the Patriots defense is. I don't think the Jets are the best position to take advantage of it. So I, I don't. I don't think we'll win. I think that. Right now, the 10 points that they're getting at home is, again, ridiculous. And I think they probably would cover that number, but I don't think they can beat them. Don't think they can beat them. So is this all a part of your plan to try to get them into the winner's circle? No, no. I, I, I am not up to any sort of ulterior motive. Yes, you or... are. We all know you are. No, I, I wouldn't stoop to those levels. You stoop. You stoop all the time. All you do is stoop. I just I just respect the fact that it was nice. it's nice that we had a winning record for, for a little while. Who knows? Eight wins might be more than enough to make the playoffs in the AFC this year. It looks like a real down year. Well, I mean, this time last week you had them at ten wins, and now they just won. I said there was a potential for it. I never said they were going to get there. Can, can you tell? Can you tell people how you were watching the game yesterday and what you did to make sure that no one changed the channel? <laughs> well, I was watching it at somebody's house because uh, here in Canada it's Thanksgiving this weekend, so I was at somebody's house for dinner. And the Jets game was on regular CTV, so I didn't have to worry about, like, finding it on a sports package. Out here, anyway, it was on the regular CTV for whatever reason. Uh, that was the game of the week for CTV Atlantic, Jets-Browns, because they want to p- pump up football. And uh, so we got there, and I, I got the game on. And then I sort of, like, put the remote by myself, and a couple of people showed up who are Boston Red Sox fans. Like, oh, we should watch the baseball game. And where's the remote? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I had it beside myself, sort of camouflaging it with the couch so they wouldn't change the channel so we could watch Jets. You're the single worst guest in the history of time. No, it was not, well, not only do you go to someone else's house and bogart the remote, you put on the fucking Jets. I want to watch my game, whatever. You could have stayed at home to watch your game, now you're at someone else's house. Imagine yeah, if you came over to my place tried to put on the Jets. Ugh. You'd have, it's to, been done. You'd have to leave. It's been done. When I had five TVs. Well, whatever the Jets were on, I want to watch the Jets. Yeah, that, 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 no, 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 no. you want to watch the good games. It was a good game. It was a three-point game. Oh, yeah, it was just terrific. I uh, We had it on the background at the bar where I watched the games. I believe it was 0-0 for, like, the first half. No one – red zone picks, turnovers, three and outs. Oh, just a thrilling contest. It was 3 nothing because Cantazero, who's one of the best kickers in the NFL, hit a 57-yarder. Yeah, and, like, midway through the second quarter. Last play of the second quarter. Okay, anyway. so there you go. So it was basically a shutout until half. It was, but you know, it's funny. The Jets and kickers, sort of like the last few years, have really come together and melded. For years, we had we were the, we could not trust a place kicker as far as you could throw them. But the last couple of last six or seven years, our kickers have really come through in the clutch. Well, I did see that. Uh, I went back and looked at some of your older tweets about how Nick Folk is the greatest. He should be NFL MVP. Sometimes it takes the curse a while to catch up to people. Folk was great when he was on the Jets. Yeah, you know? he, he wasn't great last week. Well, kicking in Tampa is tough. That grass and conditions are not great. Whatever. You know, I don't care how he does. He's off the Jets now. I don't care what he does. Yeah, but you've ruined his career. You need to take some ownership of that. First, I take no responsibility. Exactly. You need to start taking responsibility. Second, I don't understand why you had Nick Folk tweets saved. I, I don't understand that. The, the fact that you don't understand how to use Twitter is hilarious to me. I know how to use... Listen, I'm at social media cognoscenti. But yet you don't... You can't figure out how I can find your Nick Folk tweets? No, I, I actually have no idea how you're doing this. Like, are you saving them in some sort of a list? Yeah, I, I have a running Excel document of everything that you've ever tweeted, sorted by name and keyword, so I can find, I can just quickly run a search, find the link, and then bring it up on my page, and then I can link back to it. That's exactly how I do it. That's how much time I spend on this. Well, you know, I didn't want to be that solipsistic to think that, that everything is revolving around me in that sense, but I, I was willing to believe it. Of course you are, because you know nothing about social media. Well, I asked Paul last night when he pulled up a tweet of mine. He said he's got a whole list. Yeah, we're fucking with you. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because it's so easy. It's just, it's low-hanging fruit. We, I need to get a win somewhere to make myself feel good. This one's funny to me. Whatever. I, 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 I don't, the Jets are great. We're not going to win this week, but then we're going on a run. So, so you're going to lose this week, then go on a run? Is it all yeah. going to be with Jets MVP Austin Safarian Jenkins? I have no time for him. I think he's still incredibly overrated. So what you're saying is the the one guy that you don't like on the Jets who is becoming your best player catches the game-winning touchdown. Hmm, no curse though, right? No, there is no curse. Well, that sounds like a pretty big reverse curse to me. 
well, you're crazy. And, uh, the Jets are, I believe the Jets, you're the crazy one, sir. In an AFC where there's no good teams outside the Chiefs and maybe the Broncos, the Jets are as good as, as like 12 other teams. And it would shock nobody now if the Jets were the six, five or six seed in the playoffs. See, all it took for Kansas City to become the best team in football was to you to get off their jock. I think they're going to lose this coming week, too. Oh, even better. I'll continue to ride the Chiefs. You thought they were going to lose last week. It wasn't even close. That's not true. It was close. Oh, yeah. The, the Kansas City-Houston game, super close. Yeah. They lost by, it was a one-score game. Yeah, great. Did Houston ever have a chance to win that game? No. Well, when it got to be 60, it was a one-score game at 26-20. Yeah. Actually, yes. And, and, and then what happened? Kansas City came down the field, scored. They got a stop, punt return, touchdown. Not close. Well, then at that point it was over. Because the Texans have terrible special teams, and the Chiefs traditionally have the best special teams. I believe they showed the graphic last night that the Chiefs haven't allowed a special teams touchdown since, like, 2013 or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the most underrated part of a football game, but in some ways it can be the most important is special teams because it's it, – it, you know, so it affects field position. The points off uh, special teams are, are freebie points at every turn. So, the, being able to do that uh, makes a big difference. And preventing other teams from doing it uh, is also a huge, huge deal. All right, well, let's get into the power rankings for week six. We totally forgot to do this last week, and I actually made a list this time around and thought about it. For I, a second. I did too, and I sort of shopped it on Twitter last night. And people didn't have any suggestions on how to make them better; just wanted to hate on the ones I had. Good. That's it. That's what people should be doing. No, they shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, no one cares about you. Just a bunch all, of, you only make lists so people can get mad at them. Just a bunch of millennials who can't be pleased with anything. You're a millennial. So are you. Yeah, I know. And I'm not the one criticizing millennials. I actually think the millennials are incredibly hardworking and open to new ideas. Oh, yeah, open to new ideas. Yeah, they're so open-minded. Well, hey, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're the beacon of free thought here. Yeah, it's a, I like uh, it my way, and if it's not my way, I hate it. I want it oh, to go away. Oh, this coffee is a direct trade? Oh, I can't drink that. You know? Oh, okay. The, oh, you know, th th this wine isn't from somewhere in Argentina? It's, it's from lo Oh, I can't drink that? Come on. Local wine is terrible, by the way. Depending on where you're from. I guess if you were from California, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But, like, you know, living in Toronto, local wine, not the greatest. You're in, Jesus, you're in Halifax. The local wine is awful. Actually not true. Nova Scotia wine is actually... Do you even drink wine? No, is the answer. Occasionally. No, you don't. I had some last night. You had a glass? Was it Halifax wine? Yeah, Nova Scotia wine with dinner. And it was and have you good. ever actually had good Argentinian wine or Chilean wine or Australian wine or Spanish wine or, God forbid, Italian wine? No. I like to think I'm more of a sommelier than you give me credit for. You're not. As someone who has, like, a drinking problem exclusively with wine, I'll tell you about wine. Yeah, but see, your understanding of wine is just what gets you the most inebriated. No, no. Like listen, if I want to get the most inebriated, I'll, I'll buy the cheapest wine on the go. Then it really doesn't matter. But, as my wife has schooled me on it, you know, I can get myself into a, a, a nice bottle of wine now. I like big wines. I like to imbibe sort of the big, huge reds. Do you, though? Because you don't drink wine. I do occasionally. Well, by occasionally, what, once a year? No, no, maybe once a month. I'm not a big drinker. But you seem to have a lot of hot takes on drinking. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. So unless you are a brewer, you're not allowed to have opinions on you alcohol? Might as well, you might want to try to sample some things. I mean, half the stuff that you cast aside, you've never even had before. I've had lots of things. Have you, though? Because it seems, by the way that you're talking, and what you've just admitted to not doing it, you don't. Oh, I see. But again, this is all part of the millennial cult of authenticity. Unless, you know, you roll up your sleeves and live it. You know, you can't have a position on it. Well, I'm sorry, I do. Well, you know what? I, you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to run for the government, and I'm going to tell farmers how they should grow their crops. I've never grown anything in my life. You'd have a imagine someone did that. How big of a problem you'd have with that? That happened. It was called the Soviet Union, and millions of people died. Yeah, so it didn't work, did it? So now you have you, basically communist him, out here telling the people what they should live their lives. I know best, despite the fact that I know nothing. I think there's a huge difference between providing a mandatory advice on cultivation and harvesting and and power ranking the quality of wines. I, Which you've you never had. You're just, you're not even going off the internet on this stuff. You just, I don't like that. It's from here. Well, to be I fair, like I, it. It's close to me. I prefer to purchase items that are made in my country compared to other countries when all, when all things are being equal, yes. I just choose to buy the best stuff. You know, perhaps I'm more economically patriotic, I guess. Yeah, you just sound po. Buy the no, better stuff. That's not true. You can get American or Australian wines at the liquor store as cheap, if not cheaper, than Canadian wines. Yes, yeah, some of the low rent stuff. 
Oh yeah, again. See again, all unless you are drinking the finest champagne and you know you're wearing your silk tunics in your loft apartments. You know, you, you really. Well, not, I like, mean, last week you last week you were going on with loft apartments, how they're the cheapest thing on the market. Well, I've learned my lesson. I didn't realize. So, so, so now, so now, your opinion has shifted from poor bloggers live in lofts to millionaires live in lofts yeah, who drink champagne back. and wear silk tunics. The fuck yeah. says tunic? The, the what, what are you in the Legend of Zelda? This is where the urbane elite swan around. Is it though? Because you know nothing about urbane. So, it, it, by you, if you live in a city, you're an urbane elite. So you, no, have, I... you have to live in the middle of fucking nowhere, or else you know, you're you're hoity-toity. It's not if you live in a city. It's if you complete, you know. It's if you absorb and take in that urban existence and make it a part. Let you know you're sipping your lattes in the rain and working on your manuscript outside and you know going to all these exotic restaurants just so that people know you're going to all these cool places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I think you're missing the point of that. People go to the exotic restaurants because they like to try new things. They're not just okay with microwaving old McDonald's. Okay, well, first, there's nothing wrong with microwaving old McDonald's. Again, you, some, that some people like that. No, no one likes it. It's something people what? are forced to do. Or wanna... they're hungover, and they went to McDonald's at 3 a.m., and they didn't finish the entire meal because they passed out on their couch. And they're like, oh, I got these extra fries. Might as well reheat them up because I can't do anything today because I have such a headache. It's not like, you know what? I'm going to have some McDonald's, put it in my fridge. And you know what? It's so delicious when I reheat it in the morning. Yeah, no one's doing that. Only insane people would do that. You want to you want to try new things? Go to a chain restaurant and get something off the menu you've never got before because you know they'll do it I've well. been to a chain restaurant. Every chain restaurant is essentially the same. That's not true. It is no. true. Oh, really? Eastside Mario's is the same thing as Chili's. Same thing as the Cheesecake Factory. Same thing as Applebee's. No, they're not. Same thing as Outback Steakhouse. Why would you ever go to Outback Steakhouse? You ever had their Bloomin' Onion? No. Why would I want their Bloomin' Onion? Because it's excellent. No, it's not. That's for people who want diabetes. Oh, so now you just accused me of criticizing things I've never tried. And then I just asked you if you've ever had a Bloomin' Onion, and you said no, and then you judged it. So, you know, the lady doth protest too much. Yeah, but yeah, apparently I'm allowed to do that by your rules. Oh, okay. So so my rules and I don't understand. Well, you can't that. have it both ways. You can't criticize me for one thing and then defend yourself for never having anything and hating stuff. I don't hate things I've never tried. Yeah, you I've, do. I've, you actively, the type of millennial that you hate, you've never actually met in real life. They're all over the place. Oh, are they? Have you ever met one? Answer, no. I've been to... I've oh, I've in, been places. I left my house once. I've been in big cities, and I've lived in cities, and I, I know what it's like. You lived in Calgary. And I've spent time in Montreal and Vancouver and Toronto. Okay, great. And? You know, I know, and I know did you encounter any of these people? No, you didn't. You see, you see them about. No, you don't. How do you know? Walking around with their record players to listen to music. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They don't. They don't. They don't use their their phone. Put headphones in. They physically walk around with a record player, play it, and have headphones on, just so you I, know. So, I so see. they're easily identifiable to you. Yes, and they're riding around. And you're a fucking liar. Seat, is what you are. You lie. No one believes your lies. You're like Teddy from Memento. It's a terrible movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's a great movie. You no. love Christopher Nolan. No, I know. I don't. I do. He's the best director of our yeah, I mean, you already proclaimed Dunkirk the best movie of the year before you saw it. It is, and it's the betting favorite to win the Oscar, so I'm going to be proved right on that. Because so if something wins the Oscar, it's the best movie of the year? No, but... I, I, mean, that... I mean, that was your case last year until Moonlight won, and then you were like, oh, no, 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 no. La La Land's still the best. No, no. Well, La La Land it, it, it should have won. I was on it the did. right side of that. It did win, and then it didn't win. Well, it didn't win. How about that? It didn't win. You were wrong. Woo! And we won so much money betting Moonlight. Not you, but, you know, the collective us. Well, I mean, you mean the seven people that have seen it? Hey, a lot of people ended up seeing it. People love Moonlight. A lot of people. Had, Hundreds had, of thousands have, have seen you it. Have you seen it? Pardon me? Have you seen Moonlight? I had to see it before we did our Oscar show. I wasn't going to be some poser. I mean, that sounds exactly with what you've been saying that you would do. I'm no. not even convinced you've actually seen it. You probably just went for a hand job on the beach. And you said you lived the experience of Moonlight. Oh, God. Anyway, let's get to these rankings. Give me your top five power poll. So, the first one is easy. That's Kansas City. The second one I have at the moment, Philadelphia. Phillies looked amazing. And the one loss they had is to the number one team at uh, Kansas City. So, Philly's got to be two. At three, this is where it becomes dicier. At three, I have 
Carolina. They've won back-to-back at Detroit and at New England. I mean, I don't really want to have Carolina that high. I don't think they should be. But who else am I taking? Like, who else could possibly be there? The only other one, and initially I had Green Bay ahead of them. Maybe So I have Green Bay at four. I still remember Green Bay getting waxed at home to the Falcons. They played terribly against Seattle. Uh, they played lackadaisically against the Bengals. But the last two weeks, they play, and they went to Dallas. They played great against the Bears. And then they played excellent against the Cowboys offensively. And they only have one loss. So Green Bay is there at four. And then at five, I have the Falcons still. I'm going to give them sort of a break for their loss at home against the Bills. But, I mean, if you wanted to tell me Washington is there or Denver is there or somebody else, I mean, I guess I, I'll be open to listening to your point. Uh, but at the moment, I have uh, the, the Falcons as my placeholder at five. Okay, so my top five, we have the same number one, Kansas City. Undefeated, and they've looked awesome so far. So it's a hard case against them at number one. Number two, I actually went Green Bay. Just against any other team in football, I think Green Bay beats them. Like, there was nothing, there was no more confidence I had in anything ever that when Aaron Rodgers took over the ball down, you know, with a touchdown to win the game, that he was going to do it. Like, the only path Dallas had to winning that game was scoring a touchdown with zero seconds left yeah. on the clock. But the people giving Dak heat, like, you need to stop that. And Dak played it's, fine. It was a three-point. No, people say, oh, he should have gone down at the one. No, he shouldn't have. It was a three-point game. It'd be different if it was a two- or a one-point game. It was a three-point game, and you never know if you're going to score a touchdown for sure. Weird things happen. You go get your touchdown. In, I understand the case against it because Rodgers is on the other side of the ball. But you also have to punch it in. True. You don't? I, yeah, you're working against yourself. Like but, but the the more time that you can not give Aaron Rodgers, as it turns out, the better it is. I get you, but I mean, you got to hope that your defense doesn't give up a touchdown. I, I understand that, but it's it's pro football, and you got to score. Well, it was like when the the Raiders yesterday were down by like ten, then they decided to punt with four minutes left, despite the fact their defense wasn't stopping anything. It was the most. Wow. It was besides the Browns going for it from like the three yard line against the Jets for whatever reason. That was the worst play of the day, like the worst. That call was of the day. that was so fantastic. I like I I, I, I I appreciate the effort. And I, I you, I'm usually 100% for going for it, but, like, you're the Browns. Calm down. Here's one of those spots where, you know, you always say, what is the opposite fan, what do the fans the opposite team want you to do? I wanted them to go for it. Oh, of course! <laughs> and I was thrilled that they did. <laughs> and they ran it right into the gut. I was like, well, this couldn't have worked out any better. I, I think they're actively tanking. Like, they're not even hiding it at this point. Well, yeah, they are, but there's other teams that are just as bad. <laughs> All right, so I went Kansas City, Green Bay, and then I go Denver, then Philly. I think those two are very close. I I like the defense of Denver more than I like the offense of Philly. Uh, and then I, too, went Atlanta at number five. And then my next five are some mix of New England, Carolina, Washington, Seattle, and Minnesota. I think those teams. I just – Carolina has been really good, and the other – and Washington's been really good. Their defense has been a lot better than I thought they'd be. But Seattle, New England, and Minnesota are all teams that I can just see being – starting to get really, really good over the course of the next six weeks. Yeah, like, I they're, 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 sort of tre- they're sort of treading water right now and still being okay doing it. And the more the season goes along, I feel like the better they're going to get. Yeah, that's the th- I mean, Bradford's only played one game this season, so the Vikings like are just an incomplete grade for me. So I could, as much as I kind of think they are good, I can't grade them yet. I'm I mean, with you I mean, on... You can grade whoever. I mean, they're 2-2. Two and two. They'll probably get a 3-2 and two tonight, and then Bradford's... This will be the second game that Bradford plays. I mean, it's a pretty good yeah, spot. Yeah, I'm not so sure they are going to win tonight. Oh, okay. And so we have we we have four of the same five teams. Yes. Just I have the Panthers in there, and you have the Broncos in there. But you know what? I'd be open to having the Broncos in there, and I'm sure if you listened long enough, you'd be sympathetic to the Panthers. So we're pretty close on this. Yeah, the, the, I don't know how much faith I have in the Panthers just yet. I, I do think I think Philly's a lot better than you do. I mean, I think I mean, Philly. I have, I have the number four in the power poll right now. I'm still dubious a little bit. I'm not sure how good their defense is. Lane Johnson just went out, and they beat the Cardinals. The Cardinals are terrible. Yeah, okay. But, you know, I said their only loss is at KC, and that was a close game, which is impressive. Who have they really beat so far? Well, Washington. At Washington. At Washington, week one, the loss of the Chiefs beat the Giants, Chargers, and Cardinals. Like, they got the Skins uh, again. They got the Panthers this week on Thursday, and then the Skins. Like, that'll be a good test for them if they can go one and one through there. Yeah, and if they go 2 and 0. Oh, uh, they go 2 and 0, oh, then, yeah, they're definitely making the playoffs, and they got the 49ers the week after. Yeah, so. The, so we're on the same page here, which is good, but which is weird because, like I said, after the Chiefs, it's uh, and the and the Packers, I suppose, and the Eagles, it's sort of like a, 
a glut of teams. Uh, I want to ask you about some buy lows, potentially, okay. for fantasy football. Someone tweeted out last night, and I thought it was pretty funny, is that they would trade Sammy Watkins for the Zika virus right now. Yeah, well, that's that's a cheap line. That's pretty funny. No, I, it's, it's, I'm not. I'm not worried about Sammy Watkins. How are you not worried about Sammy Watkins? That seems nonsensical. I still, I think, as the year goes on, and the Rams, and Goff sort of develops and develops and develops, I think that he'll he'll become more meaningful. I'm far more worried about Cooper than I am about. Uh, we're talking about receivers who are vastly underperforming. Far more worried about Amari Cooper than I am about Sammy Watkins. All right, well, he's the next one on the list. But Sammy Cooper, rank by week so far this season at wide receiver. Wide receiver 34. Wide receiver 76. Wide receiver 5. Wide receiver 94. Wide receiver 117. And now he gets the best pass defense in the league next week in Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. The great Jags. God forbid. No, we please. It's the best pass defense in the league. Whatever. I think that I think that he'll score two touchdowns against the Jaguars. Oh Hot man! Game. And now he's gonna like blow out his knee or something. You know the Jags, the Jaguars get blown out, then they blow a team out. Then they get blown out, they blow a team out. So I think it's their week to, to lose at least. Well, they haven't blown out the Jets, but they lost to the Jets. I think it's their week to lose and to lose pretty comfortably. So uh, I like the the Rams pretty big this week, and I think uh, I I do think that Watkins gets in the end zone. It's going to be tough. I feel like if the, I mean, the Rams could definitely blow them out in this game, but I think it's going to be 100% Gurley. Gurley will be a part of it. I think that many hands make light work. Yeah, but Every- the, the way to beat the Jags, which apparently the Steelers couldn't figure out, is when you have the 32nd ranked run defense, run the ball! How about that? Yeah, run the ball. I mean, Ben threw five picks, but the two that went back for touchdowns were both deflected, so like that's just bad luck. Well, that's Saxonville turning into Pixonville. Yeah, whatever. Is, is there any story that you hate more than the Jags leading their division? No, probably not. That f- infuriates me. But don't worry, that won't last long. No, but I mean, Jet, Jets will get t- 10 wins, but the Jags, they can't do anything. It, They're it, so reversed and are cursed, it's hilarious. As soon as Mariota and Luck are back, I think the Jags will be pretty comfortably the fourth team in the division. Well, Luck doesn't look like he's coming back till November now. Well, that's it, it, If he comes back at all. I mean, Brissett can hold down the fort. But, I mean, that they're going to be in that race to the end because none of those teams seem capable of pulling away. It, it, this Jacksonville team is starting to remind me. It depends if they are if they can show up their run defense a little bit. Like, they pressured Ben on 35% of dropbacks on Sunday, and they only blitzed 8% of the time. Like, that's nuts. Yes, it is. Like that, That's bad news for other teams because the Steelers were supposed to have a decent offensive line. You know who doesn't have the best offensive line? Although it is marginally improved, and they're keeping Goff upright. The Rams do not. So they, they're no. going to need to run the ball to take some of that pressure off Goff. Because we saw it this week. Goff against a good defense, man, he did not look good. No, but he threw the game-winning touchdown if, Coop, if Cup can, can hold on to it. So, you know, it is what it is. Sure, but uh, he didn't look good in that game. No, he didn't look great. No, Seattle, Seattle actually was very – that was the most impressive game of the day yesterday, in my opinion, was Seattle with the sort of on the ropes – Everyone loving the Rams. Seattle going into L.A. and uh, winning that game by six. I was very impressed by that, I should say. So you think that you should buy low on Sammy Watkins. I would yeah, say I would say wait for this two-touchdown week that's apparently coming against the Jag, which isn't going to happen. Would buy, I would buy him low. I mean, people, you know, I'm sure there are leagues where people are just cutting him. I I, uh, I mean, I would consider it. I would not he, he's the he, He's the worst. He's the Mark Ingram of wide receivers. Do you know when he goes off? When he's on your bench. And every time that you play him, he gets zero points. That is a frustrating reality. But that, that's what he is. Like, his lack of consistency, not only, like, the worst part about these types of guys, and this is why I hate them, this is why when you spend a lot of draft capital on a player like Sammy Watkins or Mark Ingram or someone like that, just take, like, the low-rent alternative, like Deshaun Jackson, where he's your wide receiver three. Yeah, you don't expect much from him, but you know those big boom weeks are there. You're not, it's not like you're benching people for Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson has a good matchup. You put him in. Maybe he gets 100 yards and a long touchdown. But you never feel bad about benching him. If you have Sammy Watkins, because of where you drafted him, you feel obligated to play him every single week. And if that's the case, he loses you weeks. He loses you more weeks than he wins you weeks. I certainly can't defend his performance so far, and I'm not going to try. But this has been him basically every single year. I mean, I, I still do believe that the Rams – need to use him more because that he, he they brought him in for a particular purpose they gave up a draft pick and they don't have all that many left for a particular purpose and i just think if he's healthy they're going to eventually go to him and he's going to be meaningful 
uh, that that Goff is going to need to use him in spots. So I could be wrong. I'm willing to accept that I could be wrong, but I. I just think he will be relevant if he stays healthy. I just think he's one of these. He's going to have another, like, 13-target, two-touchdown game at some point. Oh, yeah, he still has three big games left in him. It's just when he has that first one, trade him immediately and get everything you can for him. Yeah, but I think I would still buy him. But, uh, I mean, you make a good case. Uh, Amari Cooper is uh, Nat. Nat been good. Is the time to buy him now? Like, I'd be more willing to invest in Cooper right now, knowing that Carr is going to eventually be back. I know he had... Had a few tough performances before that. Bad matchups. Denver against Norman. That's not good. Now, for the rest of the year, I mean, yes, he gets Denver again, but he'll have Carr back. He won't have those matchups on the slate. He should have pretty positive matchups for the rest of the time. I I think it's a spot where people are so frustrated with him right now that you can probably get him for nothing. And when I think about, like, upside purposes, I just give me Cooper 100% over Sammy Watkins. I'm so disappointed with the whole Raiders offense. They're, like, one loss Your fault! Uh, they're like one loss away from me forsaking them. Oh, see, that'd be the best thing they could ever. Why don't you do it now so they can get back, no, on, the, no, back on the winning the, path? I refuse to do that yet, but it's getting close to that point. I'm just frustrated with them. Uh, Cooper's got so much talent, and I don't understand how someone like EJ Manuel, who's you know hanging on to the NFL like by a thread, isn't targeting him constantly. Because he went I, to he went to the best receiver on the Raiders, Michael Crabtree. They could go to both. It's not like it's not like he only had. They had, he had lots of opportunity, and it's frustrating that he isn't getting Cooper the ball and giving him chances. And I don't know if Jack Del Rio sometimes I – mean, I watched his post-game press conference. Jack doesn't look, doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. Was he wearing a stupid leather jacket? <laughs> no, he was not. It's just it's frustrating. I, I have such high hopes for the Raiders, but they're just in idle until Carr gets back. I mean, Carr was, like, taking snaps and like in warm-up or something yesterday. I don't know yeah, how I... anyone – He's not coming back for weeks. Like, I don't know why we even play this game. He might come back next week. It wouldn't shock me to see him next week. With a broken back? Okay, then he gets one hit and he's done for the season. And sure, where but, but he was trying to talk his way onto the field this week. Eventually, after they watch Ege Manuel, that he's going to convince him. Oh, he's a gamer. I have no doubt about that. But in the end, I have, I've given up on Amari Cooper. Oh, great news. So trade for Amari Cooper. That's what we've learned. He is now reverse cursed. You can get him for pennies on the dollar, and Derek Carr will eventually be back. Don't worry about it, folks. Amari Cooper, great buy low right now. Let's talk Ben. Big Ben, who's given up on football. Yes, apparently. That, I mean, this was all part of my logic for why I thought the Steelers would be bad this season. That, that is one of your good calls. The thing is, they're still 3-2. and two. <laughs> They're still 3-2, and two, but and they beat... But the, the, the division is also still wide open. Sure. If you, they, they, no they, one knows the, no, the no one has a clue whether Baltimore's good or bad week to week. No one has a clue if the Bengals are good or bad week to week. And the same with the Steelers. Like it's just a series of shoulder shrugs. I, I don't know what to make of them, but I mean, so, I would, so far, so the, far in division, they're two and zero, and they beat the Vikings. Yeah, of those three teams, though, whoever has the longest odds to win the division, I would bet them now because I think. The, it's a it's a complete coin flip. I wonder what the odds. I guess not a coin flip because there are three teams. It's a complete straw poll. It's a game of rock scissors paper. Yeah, yeah, it is a game of rock paper scissors. Rock which scissors, I'm great. Rock scissors paper. I, I'm sure you are. I bet you use stick with paper the entire time. Paper is the play because people get aggressive and go rock first. Paper gets them. Have you ever won a game of rock paper scissors? I like to think of myself as one of the premier rock paper scissors. Well, there's players. a world championships. Why don't you go sign up? I don't need to show off. Ah, because you can't do it. You're a big can't do it type of guy. No, I just I don't need. I'm, I'm capable of a lot of things, you know. I would like to see this. I mean, you say you're capable, but you now how am I supposed to know? You never put it to the test. I put it to the test. Yeah, I I know things. Okay, let's see. What are the division odds right now? AFC the North. Bengals, the the Steelers. The, well, here's the thing. If you just if you don't believe in the Steelers, you could bet the Ravens and Bengals and still win money. The Ravens are three to one to win the division. The Bengals are five to one. The Steelers are minus two twenty five. Yeah, I would bet both those, and I think I like the Bengals the most. I mean, I, I like the Bengals the most of the three, actually. I was surprised the Bills were not able to generate more pass rush on Andy Dalton yesterday, despite like knowing that their offensive line is garbage. Yeah, I mean, who. I, I can't. I didn't watch a whole lot of that game. I, I, watched. I, I watched enough of it, like to see that Perfect had a real difference on their defense, and yeah, that Ber- the Bills literally have no one left on offense besides Lashawn McCoy. Yeah, the, this is all. It's all part of that. It's like it, this is what I mean. The AFC is just a stew of mediocre teams where you're just playing bingo. Any team can beat any other team in any week. Does that mean Saxonville can win the AFC? 
No, they're garbage. They're just over. They're, 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 the, they're the only. They're the three win Jags are the only bad team in the AFC. No, the Browns are terrible too. The Dolphins are pretty bad. The Dolphins are two and two. I mean, they, if they can get themselves sorted out, they'll be all right. How are they going to get themselves sorted out? Devontae Parker's hurt now. They still have and, other. And Jay, poor Jay Ajayi, man. He, the curse has done wonders to him. He's awful now. He's about to have a really big week. Well, you better hope so. We have an over-under bet of 1,500 rushing yards for him. I think he's at like 30. He's not that low. It's, but, it's, I think it's, it's pretty low. 76 or 77 last week. You know who else sucks? Julius Thomas. Yeah, but... <laughs> you can't even claim that he has a game in hand anymore now. I, I'm aware of what I can't claim. Austin Hoop Hooperton is just blowing him out of the water. Blowing out is an exaggeration. I think he's up on it by 20 fantasy points. I don't think it's that many. Well, I mean, the fact... I think that Austin Hooper has scored more in one play this year than Julius Thomas has all season, and I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Well, Julius Thomas should have had that touchdown last week. Oh, hey, so so we're, we're taking shoulda fantasy points into account now? I'm just saying. I, I, I'm not by any means conceding anything. You should. Listen, I will give you an 8-1 to one buyout on that bet right now. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, that's nice. I don't want it. You don't want it? You just want to lose the whole 10-1? to one? Uh, but we didn't, we moved off from running backs, but I wanted to ask you whether you're very worried about Derrick Henry. Cause I am, I, I've never been positive on Derrick Henry. Why would I be positive on Derrick Henry? He's a backup running back. But you see, he's not a backup running back and yet he was, uh, yesterday. Well, he, is, he, is, he is a backup running back. The, the now, only, the only week he wasn't a backup running back was the week DeMarco Murray got hurt. Now, that he, is pretty clear. I'm putting two to two together here. One guy plays the snaps and gets the carries. Other guy doesn't really do much. He's, you know, he plays 25, 30% of the snaps. Hey, when one guy gets hurt, he plays 60% of the snaps all of a sudden. And then, uh, yeah, when the other guy gets healthy, he doesn't anymore. That's a backup to him. Well, but he had 6, 14, 13, and 6 carries before this last game. Yeah, okay. And one of the games is one that uh, DeMarco Murray got hurt. The other one where he's dealing with a hamstring injury. I'm just saying I'm concerned that he had no carries against the Dolphins. I'd be concerned I that you have so much faith in him. I, 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 as we talked about this during the preseason, is that the reason that Derrick Henry was being overdrafted is because he's a high-end handcuff and only has real value if DeMarco Murray isn't there. If not, you get this week to week, and he's a guy you can never start. Okay, I mean, I, I think that's becoming more and more the case. So maybe you shouldn't have burned your fifth-round pick on him. Ah, uh, well, okay, well. I can't go back in time now, can I? Well, you said you're very capable. Maybe time travel is something you need to do. You can go back in time and just be right about everything. Although I would be curious to know, if you did build a time machine, went back in time, and then picked the side of the teams that you know have already won or are going to win, whether or not that would curse them and the result would change. I think if I could build a time machine, I could go back in time and just stay there. <laughs> I mean, you, would. <laughs> you wouldn't use it to your own benefit. You'd just travel back to 1953 and live there. Yeah. Live the simple life. It would be if it'd be like Norman Rockwell's paintings. God. Uh, let's talk receivers uh, for pickups. Uh, again, not much on the go here. If Will Fuller obviously is still out there, grab Will Fuller. Although I think he's a he's above the threshold right now. Him and Devin Funches are the two guys. They're the very clear pickups. And I go John Brown, Cooper Cup, Jermaine Curse, Marquise Lee came back. We thought he was going to miss the game. He turned out fine. Uh, Alan Hearns, Jaron Brown, JJ Nelson. Paul Richardson, like all these guys are owned in any sort of competitive league. The only one I would give a special look to uh, is Ricardo Louis on the Browns. He's like their only good receiver. Although Casey Williams was doing stuff with Deshaun Kaiser, but Louis was kind of treading water with Kaiser in. Then Hollywood Hogan came in and kept looking his way. He finished like five for 70. Like I'm not talking about picking him up in a 12 team league, but a PPR format. Ricardo Lewis scared the living daylights out of me. He's not bad. No, he isn't bad. And t you, what you say is correct. Hogan was looking his way. A kid had eight targets yesterday. Uh, he's the only... He, I still want to own y N Nyoku. I still think he's half decent. Nijoku? I know he's, Nijoku yeah, has... Uh, Hollywood Hogan's has three touchdowns this year. Two have been to Nijoku. He's really, really good. Even though he's not being targeted enough, he's not being used enough. Just like raw skills, he is really good. And tight end is such a wasteland that I, I would never give up on him yet. But other than that, Ricardo Lewis or Louie, or whatever you want to pronounce his name, uh, he's a little, he, he scared me. And so I think he's, he's someone to, to, attention must be paid as Arthur Miller would say. What else scares you besides millennials? Millennials don't scare me. They just say, they see, they get you pretty riled up. It seems like you're pretty terrified of them. Just their culture and their entitlement infuriates me. The way you they, speak, no one has more entitlement than you do. 
I'm not entitled to anything. If things don't go your way, you get very upset to the nth degree. Then you have to expose it to the world and try to find, and then people will disagree with you, and you'll find one person who does agree with you. You'll be like, people say that I'm right, you know. People do say that I'm right. No, like a person will say that you're right. That's a big difference. You know, sorry, I can't be driving around my bike on those 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 city paths and, you know, going everywhere, you know, to go to my Whole Foods and pick up my, you know, asparagus water or whatever the kids are doing these days and my faux furky. You realize that, like, people under the age of 30 like can't afford to shop at Whole Foods, right? Where do you think I, the millennials are getting all this money from that they spend on these <laughs> on this ridiculous stuff? They have no money. It's actually a real concern my, that millennials are in line to soon and are starting to inherit a bunch of money from the baby boomer generation. And instead of doing what their parents did, they're just going to set it on fire on meaningless things. That's good for the that's great for the economy, though. Never had spend, a more, spend, 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 spend. Had a more materialistic, short-sighted generation than millennials. Also, you don't need to go to Whole Foods. You can just order that shit online. Yeah, well, again, this is all a problem. Why? I order my groceries online. I don't have a car. Well, what like, am I going to do? Go to the grocery store like a normal person. And what, take, take a cab to the grocery store? Carry them. Okay, you know what? Next time you come and visit me, we'll go get a full thing of groceries. You can carry them all back by yourself. I used to do that. You, you like walking two miles, do you? I don't care. Really, you don't care? That's soft, urbane elite. I used to keep my hands nice and fresh so they don't have calluses on them. How much do you spend when you go to the grocery store? Eh, not that much. Yeah, see, I'm talking about like $100, $150 buys here. I, I actually eat real food. So like, I, I, I buy meat. I don't just buy stuff that's frozen. Whatever. I, I also buy fresh fruit. I buy fresh vegetables. I buy those. No, you don't. You see, last week you just told us that you buy everything frozen. It's just not the same. Not, not avocados. Oh, so it's a useless thing to you, Mr. Millennial. You and your avocados. I, I like avocados. Why don't you buy that. frozen avocados? I hear they're exactly the same. No, I don't think that such a thing even exists. Well, what if they did? How do you know? You don't seem to know that anything exists. I like, you know, I, I like to walk around grocery stores. <sighs> just like the mall? It's like the money. Even though I'm not buying much, I like to walk down every aisle just to see if anything new is on sale, any new stuff is out. And this is where I encounter like the pumpkin spice Oreos that get me all riled up. That's another millennial thing, by the way. You're getting riled up over like weird candy. Well, it shouldn't exist. Why? Why shouldn't it exist? Because I shouldn't have to look at it. Me, 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 me. I don't like it. This is your entitlement right here. Shouldn't exist. I don't like it. I think they should be banned. I'd ban them. <laughs> you need to run for serious office here you can get people on board with your hot takes you can ban whatever you want I might you can be the anti-liberty party <laughs> well I've already been called a raging liberal on this show somehow that was the, probably the most outrageous thing that I've ever heard like uh, most dyed in the wool conservative has been on this show with me and I'm being accused of being a hardcore liberal well, apparently you're not right wing enough for some people yeah, well, you're right, unless unless I'm wearing a MAGA hat at all times. Yeah, well, listen, I mean, you're a big deal on the channel Chan 4 message boards. <laughs> Apparently. Chan 4 slash Jet slash Notre Dame message boards. That's all it, you. It's called 4chan, oh, not see. Chan 4. So I see, I mean, I, listen, I'm not the expert. You are. I, I don't go to 4chan. I, I know it exists, but I don't I don't hang out on slash r slash the Donald. <laughs> you should. You definitely should. We may, we may need a report on it someday. I don't think we want to report on that. I think it's probably very dark and full of Pepe memes. Oh, man. Can they just put Pepe back on Twitter? They, they cannot, because as soon as he goes back, he will be offside and aggressive. But he wasn't really... I mean, yes, he was offside. Yes, he was aggressive. But it just seemed like a bot. <laughs> that just wrote in all caps. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the actual tweets. Yeah, nothing. It was just some weird response. Yeah, listen, Trump, was... You're like, oh, I'm going to Illinois today. It's like, ah, oh, crooked <laughs> Hillary, lock her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. All right, back to receivers. Uh, some of the guys I'm looking at for this week, the Dolphins just have not been good. Now they travel to Atlanta. Uh, Muhammad Sanu could miss this game. Julio Jones is still banged up as well. Uh, that kind of puts a one-week premium, if you want to, in deeper leagues and need a receiver, unlike Taylor Gabriel, potentially for 16-team leagues. You could look at Justin Hardy. Austin Hoop Hooperton becomes an option here, although we'll get to streaming tight ends or guys that you can stream out there. And there I like the sledgehammer this week quite a bit, actually. Yeah, so do I. I, I think, But, I, again, in the rankings, like he's still behind Muhammad Sanu for the year because Muhammad Sanu has a role in that offense. He just happens to be injured right now. So for sure. the rest 
of the year, I would prefer Sanu. For this week, uh, Gabriel as the Sanu replacement, I think actually makes a lot of sense. I buy that. In a PPR league, I love Hump Daddy this week. Oh, you love Hump Daddy every week. Hump Daddy couldn't do it against the Patriots. That's problematic. I still think he'll be fine with an extra. And I like that. I, I mean, you I know, was down, for, for I, someone who loves Hump Daddy so much, you know, he's a free agent in our league, right? A 14 team yeah. league. You don't, I, you don't have, have the guts trigger. to pull the trigger? I had him on the offseason and chose not to keep him. Yeah, but now you can have him for free. Yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, Mike Williams and Corey Davis. Mike Williams seems like he's inching closer and closer and closer to playing every week. I don't know what his role is going to be in this offense, but outside of Keenan Allen with the Chargers, like no one gets like a ton of targets. Maybe Mike Williams could be that guy. Corey Davis should be back from his hamstring soon. Hopefully they make it when Mariota returns so he doesn't have to go out and suffer through the Matt Castle experience. But between those two, is there one that you would rather own? Because I think I would rather own Corey Davis. Totally would rather own Corey Davis. They drafted him as high as they did because they believe in the kid, and he's got raw skill. And I saw in college he had raw skill. So, yeah, that's he. you want him, he'll be fine. Okay, so I guess the big thing right now, and we haven't touched on this yet, and eventually we should, but uh, one of the year's biggest Ander curses, uh, besides David Johnson, is Odell Beckham, um, who you've suggested to draft over Le'Veon Bell because Le'Veon Bell sucks. Uh, can't play Odell Beckham anymore. He did. So everyone on the Giants is dead. That's not good news. Brandon Marshall has an ankle injury. No word on how long he's going to be out. Could be a couple weeks. Sterling Shepard's already listed as week to week. Dwayne Harris is out for the year in that game. That's the underrated part of this. And, of course, Odell Beckham's done for the season with a broken ankle as well. Somehow, with all these guys out, Evan Ingram didn't get a catch, which seems unfathomable, but it happened. So that leaves Roger Lewis as the only guy left for... Isn't that like the most uh, generic name a person could come up with? Yeah, it seems he sounds like a creative player, but he's going to be their wide receiver one for the foreseeable future. They just promoted Travis Rudolph from the practice squad. Um, They also have Ed Egan and Marquise Bundy on the practice squad as well. I know nothing about these two. They might get a shot. No one knows anything about these people. Maybe they'll sign Victor Cruz. (laughs) Then he can sat himself. I don't know what they're going to do. But it's not like they play a good defense this week. Oh, wait. And that's but that's the whole thing. Like the next two weeks, they have Denver this week. They have someone else the week after uh, that actually has a very good pass defense as well. So yes, Roger Lewis is the pickup. He's the one who should see the volume. But by the time that Marshall and Shepard get back, like it just it might not make any sense. Yeah, they go Broncos then Seahawks and then Rams and then Niners. Well, the Rams the Rams don't have the best defense. Yeah, maybe not. But yeah, Broncos, Seahawks, Rams next three weeks. And then the Chiefs after a week. Uh, oh, and then the Redskins. Oh, boy. So, it just the thing is, Lewis would be the pickup. Have a single win on this schedule? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the thing is, Lewis would be the pickup. They're playing, like, let's say if it was the Rams, Niners the next two weeks, not the Broncos and the Seahawks, then I'd say, yeah, definitely pick him up. You could probably use him as a wide receiver three because he'll probably see double-digit targets. But I, sure. even if he gets double-digit targets against these two teams, I don't know how good that's going to be. Probably not. Yeah. I don't want to own any of these people. So I, I would just, for the rest of the season, would you rather have Marshall or Shepard? I think I would go Shepard. Yeah, I agree, Shepard, because Marshall's an old man. Who knows how many weeks he's going to be out for. And he's on your fantasy team, so, I mean, that's not good news. Yeah, you would think the Beckham injury would at least open up. Uh, at, you know, the two starting running backs I have are there because of injuries to other players, and I was hoping that maybe the Beckham injury would at least open the availability for Marshall, but uh, didn't work out. Uh, Devontae Parker could play this week. He was spotted on crutches after the game with an ankle problem. That would, I mean, what's that? That's good. Yeah, I mean, I saw someone with a broken foot, and they were using a scooter instead of crutches, but it was like a you push it with one leg. And, you yeah, know, Neil, the Neil scooter, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know these things existed. I was just, I was. it's funny, because I saw like a 10-year-old girl, she had a broken foot. I didn't see she, had, still... a bro- I didn't see she had a broken foot. I just saw her going on a kneeling scooter, and I thought it was like the, the lazy man scooter. But apparently... Yes, don't take a knee on your scooter around the vice president. Oh, yeah, he'll have to bolt. Too much for him. Can't I'm handle it. Sure. Shouldn't have said that. Now the MAGA people are gonna are gonna be angry. Why? You're like Mr. Mike Pence. You love yeah, Mike I know. Pence. I'm a, I've been a fan of Mike Pence for a while, but I thought what he did yesterday was abhorrent, and a waste of money. It was. I heard it cost two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. It was a complete political stunt, and he he should be better than that. Well, I mean, he probably is better than that, but uh, you know, Trump's telling me, "Hey, Mike, here's what you need to do." He's like, "All right, oh, okay, coach, I'm in." And when you're the vice president, you really don't have actual responsibilities, so. This is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And he already had like a, something set up for the, that afternoon. So it was like, it was clear this was all a farce. I'm disappointed in him. You, you expect better from Mike Pence? I do. Yeah, well, and you see, I like that people were going, I was like, he stole all the thunder away from Peyton Manning. 
<laughs> like, that yeah. was the big story, that it was Peyton Manning Statue Day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ugh. Um, so if you want guys to stream this week through your lineup, uh, your main man, Jermaine Curse, and even Robbie Anderson, I think actually have stream value here against the Patriots. Cause they, Curse know. has more than stream value. Curse must be owned. Yeah, man. The, I, unless he catches a touchdown, he's kind of useless. But they have so few options that he's going to have many opportunities to catch touchdowns. D- does he though? Because like he's getting the same amount of targets like Curly and Robbie Anderson right now. Well, when they're down by like four touchdowns this week, there'll be so much garbage time potential for Curse that I like it. Listen, I have him at number five in the rankings this week. I think he's a fine streamer. I think that Robbie Anderson's probably a better standard league streamer because if he scores a touchdown, it'll probably be like a fifty-yard touchdown and a four-yard yeah, touchdown. It, it depends on what you're looking for, I think. Yeah. But those would be the two guys for me. And, uh, yeah, back to Parker. Uh, Kenny Stills would theoretically get a bump, but, like, I don't think anyone's getting a bump in this offense, except for that offensive lineman. Big bumps for him. Offensive line coach. Was it the offensive line coach? Oh, yes. He loves yeah. it. He loves a good – just, yeah, listen, if – He's the guy who's mentoring Laramie Tunsil. Well, listen, you're in Miami and you're bumping rails. What else are you going to do? Yeah, he probably will not be employed by the time this podcast Oh, lands. no, they'll just say it's sugar. <laughs> he was just talking to the sugar man. <laughs> uh, tight ends. This is where things get a little bit interesting because uh, last week we hyped up Hunter Henry. They're all terrible. Well, we hyped up Hunter Henry and we hyped up Austin Safarian Jenkins because the Browns and Giants do not cover tight ends. And guess what? Both guys score a touchdown. So, number one in the waiver wire pickup rankings for week six tight end, Ryan Griffin taking on the Browns. Why not? I like break better than Griffin. I have to admit that. I am playing anyone who plays the Browns at tight end. Doesn't matter how good or bad you are, unless your name is Jack Doyle and you get hurt, you're set up for success. Like, why not do it? Like, you really trust Cam- Cameron Brait's probably a better. Because I think Brait's like a must start every week tight end. That's why. Do you think it's because he's Brait? <laughs> Brait's fine. Hey, listen, I have no problem starting Brait. That's why he's number two in these rankings. But he's touchdown or bust. Oh, do you know who else you could pick up who had a big day yesterday? No, don't say it. Cancelled me, Timbers! (laughs) I asked you not to say it. (laughs) Ah, Cancelled me, Xerxes! (laughs) <laughs> no, please, please don't. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so pull this together. So the full rankings go Ryan Griffin, he's bright! Austin Safarian Jenkins, <laughs> A.J. Derby, Ben Watson. Watson had a terrible game. Then Njoku, just because if Hogan starts, I, I wouldn't care. <laughs> Njoku's touchdown was awesome. Njoku's not bad, but like if Hogan's oh. not playing, he's unstartable. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think Hogan's going to start for a while. You don't think he was, Ho- you don't he think was think... trying to get fired. What's that? He was, tr- he was trying to get fired. <laughs> Listen, Hogan's going to be fine. I think he's going to end up starting for the Browns here. Kaiser's so bad. Well, but again, he's a rookie. He's got Wait, no but, he's so, but he's bad. He's a bad rookie. People, everyone except for you in the Browns thought he was terrible coming into the year. Turns out he's terrible. Some... Of course you're willing to cut him some slack. He played for Notre Dame. Yep, oh, yes. Yeah. You see these Notre Dame players, they just take 20 years to develop. Then they'll be great. You're right, because a player's not allowed to have a season to develop. Unless he's amazing, out of the shoot, he's useless. Okay, like, I, I, But he I wasn't buy- supposed to be good coming in, and now that he hasn't been good, I don't see what would lead you to believe that he will be good. I saw him play in college with, with better weapons. He'll be fine. No. This is the end of Mr. Kaiser. No, it, it is not. It's just the beginning. Hey, you were scared of Hogan when he came into the game. Hogan, well, yeah, because he... he Hogan he does has, things. Yeah, Hogan took us... Was I was having flashbacks to the Irish Stanford game a couple of years ago. <laughs> All right, so the case for Ryan Griffin is that he's playing the Browns. The case for AJ Derby in this game is that he's playing the Giants. I mean, it's thin. There's injuries. Kelsey could be out. Gronk could be out. Charles Clay, you just lost. Ben Watson. I didn't even know what was up with him yesterday. He did lead the team in targets, and one of their tight ends scored a rushing touchdown at one point. Oh, Gronk won't be out. Gronk will be in there scoring two touchdowns at least. See, you're see, you're really trying to use the curse to your advantage here. No, no, I just. I'm a clear-eyed, reasonable person. Oh, yes, reasonable would be the way people describe you. Yes. 
Anyway, those would be the pickups for me. I think that Brayton, Austin Safari, and Jenkins actually have week to week value. Uh, based... I think Brayton definitely does. Yeah, Brayton does because he's being used as the red zone target. If teams are going to take away Mike Evans, that is the first look. And listen, he led all tight ends in touchdowns last year with eight, so it's not inconceivable that he could do that again. Jenkins is just getting seven targets every week. PPR wise, he has, actually has a pretty good built in floor. Doesn't get like for standard leagues, he's kind of useless because he gets like thirty yards a week. But if you're really trying to scum the bottom of the barrel, need like seven points or eight points every week from a tight end asj can do that for you you watch them they, they throw to him yeah they throw to him way too often he's not good see that that's a good so, thing they oh, throw to him way the, too often the best party is i guess there's they were talking about jenkins they're like oh you know he's so much different he's in tampa he's lost like 30 pounds he says he cares now so like, what the hell do you mean he cares well now? i mean the guy had to go to rehab for a drinking problem now he, he doesn't have the drinking problem he's been through rehab he's come out the other side seems like he's focused yeah eh, i don't believe in him you just don't like people who went to rehab. No, I have no problem with people. It sounds who went, like you do. I'm glad when people do go to rehab, they get their lives straightened out. Not him. Like not this. you're holding it against ASJ for his life. I do not do those things, but I just don't think he's a good player. I don't believe in him. Oh, well, three touchdowns for Austin Ferry and Jenkins this week. Uh, and, I, I hope I, he scores a thousand. What's that? I hope he scores a thousand. No, you, I just don't you, you, well. hate, you hate his guts. Yeah, maybe the kid in that NFL commercial can get his jersey. Do you want to talk about that? I'm so angry about that. Please fill people in if they haven't seen the commercial. So, for those of you who haven't seen it, although you probably did because it was on 100,000 times yesterday. If you're listening to this, you probably saw it. NFL Shop has this new commercial where there's a family of young people of like two, looks like three sons and a family. They're all Jets fans. And they all have Jets jerseys on. And then a knock comes at the door and the youngest son gets up and answers the door. And then there's this weird pan on their smiles that makes no sense. And then the youngest son gets a, a box. And he runs upstairs into his room, which is full of Jets memorabilia and Jets stuff. And he opens it up, and it's an Odell Beckham Jr. jersey. And he's, like, really excited to have it. And he looks around shiftily and hides it under his bed. The premise of it is being, you know, that even though he's supposed to be a Jets fan, deep down a Jets fan is supposed to be a Giants fan. And that Odell Beckham is really his his favorite team. And he's just, he's he's ashamed of being a Jets fan. And, like, there's so many problems with this commercial. First, as someone mentioned yesterday on Twitter, mail doesn't get delivered on Sunday, so that whole conceit is a lie. Secondly, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's your nitpick with this random commercial. Secondly, the idea is, oh, the Jets, the, 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 uh, all Jets fans deep down want to be Giants fans. They're jealous of all the exciting players that the Giants have. And you can't really, you know, deep down a Jets fan wants to put on blue and take off their green. Third, you know what? The kid can have, be a Giants fan. The Jets aren't good enough for him. I don't want him cheering for the... You know, to be a Jets fan means that you go through the ups, which are very infrequent, and the downs, which are frequent. And you suffer, as Hamlet would say, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. You don't get to, like, jump off the Jets because some player on the Giants is exciting. Who cares? I mean, it's not... In, it just infuriates me, the idea that, that we can just, oh, let's just make fun of the Jets on, in the commercial because no one likes the Jets that commercial had been reversed or if it had been the Patriots or if it had been any other team that there would have been an outrage, but it's because, Oh, no one is a fan of the New York jets. We can make fun of them. Ha ha ha. It infuriated me. I'm so tired of having my team treated like they're that some after ran that their fans deep down don't even want to be fans. It was like Stockholm syndrome that if they could get out of their jets fandom, they would. It infuriated me. It was in bad form. And I, the jets are three and two. And the Giants are terrible, and it ugh, just makes me so mad. You do sound like someone who does have Stockholm Syndrome, though. No, I just... You know, the Jets and and the, after you put this out on... I, listen, I didn't see the commercial, but after you put it out on Twitter, multiple people responded to you that the premise of the commercial was not that he was a Jets fan and was sneakingly secret, wanted to be a Giants fan, that his whole family were Jets fans and that he was a Giants fan. Well, then why is his room full of Jets stuff? Because his family, they're, they're oppressive. I mean, when you're a Jets fan, you need to keep as many people in as possible. So you have to try to make him be a Jets fan, but he's just not a Jets fan. Listen, no, I, your dad tried to indoctrinate you with the Dolphins. It didn't work. I'm sure you had Dolphin stuff around when you were a kid. No, you know what? If the Jets aren't good enough for him, good enough. Let him be gone then. You don't want him. He doesn't agree no. with me. I don't like him. I hate him. No. I if want that kid willing, to die. Your take. Being a, being a Jets fan is a way of life. Got a sad way of life. It is. It is. Uh, you know, it's an ascetic, stoic way of living. But when they eventually win a Super Bowl, those of us who have put up with all the nonsense, with all the hate, 
and with all the 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 the, the agony, we will be triumphant. You know, that kid doesn't deserve to celebrate. I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's a Jets fan. Just again, no other team would that commercial be acceptable with. You know, if they, you know, if he was a Bears commercial, no, no, no. see, I, I disagree with this. I mean, you, you could have that commercial with any other team. Apparently, you and Jets fans just get butt hurt by this stuff. And I wasn't the only one upset. There were other Jets fans online telling me how upset they were. And I, that the boards haven't talked about it, but I guarantee you, the boards will be aflame about this. Well, you can go talk to all your online Jets friends. You know, it's just, we're it's all, just, we're it, all probably it, secretly Giants fans. It, it's, it, this is exactly my problem, right there. Is that attitude? Wait, it's you, just a, it's, you're it's, you're a secret Giants fan. You said last I, week on the show you love the Giants. I love the fact that Eli won two Super Bowls against the Patriots. So you love the Giants? No, I don't. Li- no, I don't. I have no fondness whatsoever for the Giants. I have two, happiness for the two games that they won. Why do you have an Odell Beckham Jr. jersey underneath your bed then? Yeah, again, uh, that oh, we're. Uh, it, I, I can't even form sentences. I'm I'm still seething about it. Seems like a really odd thing to get bent out of shape about. Well, the first time I saw it, I was like, I just kept seeing it and seeing it. And they were just like rubbing my noses in it. Hey, it's better. Listen, I was at a Thanksgiving party on the weekend. It was the Leafs home opener. People were really big on the Leafs. And all these people at this party had Leafs jerseys with their own last names on them. That is the worst trend, by the way. People put their last yeah. name on jerseys. I, I am 100% with you. Oh, I, I, I also think that adults wearing jerseys of any team is just bizarre. Unless, oh, no. I don't, I don't, unless, I don't, you're at, unless you're at a sporting event, I guess sitting around to watch it with people. But then you can take them off right after because, like, you're not nine years old. Yeah, I don't mind wearing my Jets or Montreal or whatever stuff during games. But I wouldn't put my last name on stuff. I agree with you. Cast. The, Leafs, the Leafs have a free path to the Eastern Finals uh, until the Stanley Cup Finals. So. See, you're just using the curse to try. Listen, I, I'm happy you're doing this. I hate the Maple but I hate hockey, so this would really work out for me. I don't need people around town being like, man, these so good. These Stanley Cup winners. Well, I, I got some news for you. That is going to happen. What? That that is all you were going to hear around town. Oh, it's all, when they're in last place, that's all I hear. I can't imagine if they were, like, third place. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's coming. All right, let's talk streaming quarterbacks. Carson Palmer, I have at number one against Tampa. Yep. Uh, their defense is still banged up. Carson Palmer next to throw the ball, and Jameis is going to put up points against Arizona. Arizona's defense bad. Uh, Jacoby Brissett at Tennessee. Sam Bradford against Green Bay. Uh, I want to see Bradford first. If he looks really good on Monday night, then he's completely healthy. I'll probably bump him up the list a little bit. Josh McCown against New England. Stream against New England tends to work out pretty well. Close to 20 points a week against them. And then Kevin Hogan, if he's starting at Houston. The guy the guy will have a built-in floor as a streaming quarterback just because he runs the ball so effectively. If he starts. I mean, have we heard any news no, about I, that? I, listen, I said if if he is the starter against Houston, he would be the play. Kaiser, I, don't play him. He's terrible. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's all well said. And everyone yeah, else is, everyone else is just own. It. It's a tough yeah, streaming week. Yeah, there really aren't very many streaming options. I mean, maybe Simeon's available. Yeah, is he he's at home. home. So the Broncos. He always plays well. Has been playing well at home. So I mean, he didn't have. A, I mean, I used him on DK uh, the week before the bye, two weeks ago at home against the Raiders. Not so hot. He played fine. Just terrible fantasy there. Yeah, no, fair enough. But I'm just saying, if you were looking for, you know. If it's him versus Jacoby Brissett, you know, I don't know. I prefer I mean, the guys, I mean, Brissett, uh, he was my number one guy last week as a streamer. He scored like 24 fantasy points. Yeah, no, I get you. But now he's on the road outdoors. I'm, I'm just saying. The Titans defense is bad. Didn't look good. Although, I mean, the, you say the Dolphins are so terrible and they, they only scored 16. So. Exactly. The fact they scored 16 is stunning. They had scored a, combi- s- they had com- scored a combined six the two weeks before. I, I see bright things. They got the shut out by the Saints. I see bright things in the Dolphins' future. Oh, God. Bad news for Dolphins fans. Uh, streaming defenses of the week. I actually have Washington at number one against San Francisco. Washington's defense has been impressive so far. Yeah, no. I think that's a very, they, they certainly have been, and they're coming off a bye. Uh, although Josh Norman's going to be out for like three to four weeks with like a bruise along or something like that. That, that sucks. I love the Chargers this week uh, as a stream defense. I have them at number five. So I go Washington, uh, the Rams at Jacksonville, Philly at Carolina on Thursday night, Atlanta against Miami, and then uh, the Chargers at Oakland. Yeah, no, I think I, I agree with all of those. But you like the Texans? Char- you like the- 
Texans against the Browns is reasonable, too. Yeah, I mean, when you can just go pick up a 100% owned defense, you might as well do it. You know who else is a great pick Texas, up this week? The Texans yeah. 100% owned? See, I'd be lying. I you you know who else is a great pick up this week? Antonio Brown? Okay, see, I did not. I don't follow defensive owner percentage nearly as closely as you, so I apologize if the Texans are that well up. Sorry. Pick up Denver's defense. I just assume most people are like me, and they stream defenses week to week. No, most people are not that way. People okay. love getting a D and sticking with them. Yeah, well, I don't understand that. And then but. they'll do things like, you know, keep the defense on their team during bye weeks and pick up another defense. Yeah. And then that's... they have to drop, like, a running back. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. well. Um, so we're deep into this. I know we just kind of flew through. We got the, the running backs was the only thing to really talk about this week. Not a big pickup week. Uh, anything else you want to hit on here? We hit on the shop. Oh, I've been watching the new Star Trek series. I have heard nothing but good things about it, though uh, I haven't watched it. Uh, well, it's weird because it had, like, a two-hour, like, premiere that was basically, like, a mini-movie. Kind of resembled, like, what Battlestar Galactica was like, how they had the two miniseries before getting into the real show. I didn't love, like, the first one. It was very action-y. Uh, it was more like the movies and not really like a Star Trek TV series. But ever since they've got into the actual show, it's very good. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't watched it, so I don't know how much I can contribute to it, but I intend to because people have said good things. I will say I'm hyped for the Star Wars trailer to come out at halftime tonight. Because you hate Star Wars now? I love Star Wars, but my problem is I'm going to want to watch it again and again. And, and again and uh, again. And again and again and Tuesday again. Morning, on Tuesday morning on YouTube, all I'm going to find is the various nerds who have broken down the trailer shot by shot for 30 minutes trying to explain to me what, oh, see, he's reaching out his hand. That's mechanical, so that must be... Is that, no, you don't know anything. Hi, I'm Tim. I just admitted I want to watch a Star Wars trailer 50 times in the course I'm of an hour. Person. Yet I, I... These nerds out there are a bit too much. Give, well, I got give your, your head a shake, pal. I got into some real fights with nerds on Saturday night because you were talking about Star Wars. And you know I'm dealing with real Star Wars fans because it was Saturday night and we were fighting about it. You know, okay, the, so, so the real nerds who were fighting with you about Star Wars on a Saturday night and you were the one who brought up Star Wars on a Saturday night to begin with? Well, they, I but the, a, they're the nerds? I put out a definitive ranking of the Star Wars movies, and it's, it's infuriated some people. So, What were your definitive Star Wars? Do I even want to know this? I thought it was, I mean, the, the, the original three are in the top three. I and then, But I didn't have one, two, and three as the three worst. Like, I, I don't think they are the worst. I think three is the absolute worst. Yeah, three, but I think three, three is the best of the early ones. The only thing three has, and this is what got people going originally, is I said Order 66 versus the Jedi was the coolest fight scene in the series. Uh, but other than that, like that whole rest of that whole that rest of that entire movie is trash. And I, you know, I don't think Episode One is is not the worst. I think it's half it's half decent. You you seem to me like a Jar Jar Binks defender. No, it wasn't about Jar Jar Binks. No, you just, love I, Jar Jar, don't you? I'm all about Darth Maul. If I was to do an official Darth, Darth Maul's... Range, no, really, Darth, Darth Maul would be Maul. above Darth Vader, would he? Yes, because yeah, Darth see, Vader this, gave this up... Is, this is, I don't even want to continue this. This is outrageous. Darth Vader no, gave no, up no, no, no. The... I, I don't care. This is outrageous and wrong. I don't want to hear about it anymore, okay? He gave up on the dark side. No, I don't They're care! Really... Shut up! Darth Maul died for his principles. Oh, my God. Plus, he had that double-sided lightsaber. How cool is that? Not as cool as Hard Rock Stadium. May, maybe not. But anyway, I mean, I am fired up for the trailer tonight. I hope it's good. I doubt it will be. That was the Week 6 Waiver Wire show. That, with his insane takes, was Tim and August. Tim and August. That is not my name. I feel like we had more fight today than we had in the past. Well, it's Monday morning. And I, I don't know. It's a holiday. I'm working on a holiday. <laughs> taking out your frustration on me yeah that's how it's gonna go anyway i'm pat mayo you can follow me on twitter at the pme on instagram at the pme on facebook at slash the pme and that's probably the best place to find the actual running list of content is the facebook page plus our picks cheat sheet is up there as well instagram is just like a personal thing if you want to follow me there go nuts but twitter is where you get the back and forth if you leave youtube comments i mean i don't look at them so if you want to ask me questions you're gonna to have to hit me up on twitter i can't just be in every place at once twitter is if you have questions hit me up on twitter i will get back at you unless i have you muted and then i won't get back at you but either way you know that's where i have the most viability for you to get answers from me probably bad answers because i'm terrible at this anyway give the show a thumbs up subscribe to the audio versions and leave a review spread the word around and tell people you like the show even if you have to lie tell them like the show anyway anyway i'm pat mayo good luck this week i'll see you next time